Hi everyone, I'm Imdi Nazmul Hassan. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about transmission line crosstalk, how we can model it, and how we can design and simulate this structure in HFSS and quantify the mutual coupling between two coupled transmission lines. So let's start. Now what happens if we have a metal trace mounted on top of a substrate? For example, if we have a metal trace on this PCB at very high frequency, um, this is no longer a simple metal trace, rather it's a transmission line. That means the current I is basically a function of the position that uh, um, is basically denoted by Z code in it and also a function of time. And the voltage is also a function of position and the time as well. So this effect is the transmission line effect. The voltage and the current is no longer um, same on this metal trace. It varies with the position and also with time. Now, in order to model this effect, we use this uh, lump circuit equivalent model uh, by uh, loading periodic inductance, per unit inductance, and per unit capacitance, right? If we neglect the resistive losses, then we can simplify the model like this. So it's basically just a periodic change of inductance and capacitance. Now, um, these are basically per unit um, in that sense that unit is basically Henry per meter and for the cap is Farad per meter. All right. Um, now, if you uh, terminate this other end of this transmission line with a load ZL, for example, and the characteristic impedance for this transmission line is Z0, then the input impedance Z11 on this side is basically Now the interesting fact is that um, this Z0 is also a function of this per unit inductance and the capacitance. So Z0, uh, if we neglect the losses, so in low loss transmission line, we can actually simplify this model uh, as uh, L over C, all right? If we have losses, then yeah, we have to include those resistive part as well. Now, this Z0 is the characteristic impedance for this single transmission line. Now, things get a little bit interesting uh, when you mount two transmission lines um, side by side on the same substrate. You will no longer see this um, single Z0. You will see uh, multiple impedances in even and odd mode. Let me explain it elaborately. For example, um, let's say we have a substrate. And then we have two transmission lines, and they are separated by a distance. This is basically S, and this is M1, M2, microstrip line 1 and microstrip line 2. Now, um, basically since they are placed side by side, there would be mutual inductance and then mutual capacitance as well. So these mutual terms are basically would disturb the Z0 here and also here. So you will no longer see this single Z0 if you have this mutual coupling between these two transmission lines going on. So this is basically crosstalk or mutual coupling. So what happens is that then, depending on the current direction, you will see even mode impedance and odd mode impedance. Let me change the color. For example, if the current I1 is flowing in this direction and I2 is in the same direction, then basically uh, you will not see Z0, you will see an impedance Z even mode. So you will see an impedance Z even mode here, all right? And then, if the current direction changes, for example, if I2 is flowing in this direction and I1 in the opposite direction, so basically this is the odd mode impedance, Z R. 
and this z even and odd mode would be um, different from z naught. All right. So the more the crosstalk between these two uh, transmission lines, um, you will see the difference between the even and odd mode uh, in, in a higher way. So um, if you uh, sufficiently distance these two transmission lines farther apart, then and the even mode and the odd mode impedance would be exactly equal to Z naught if the distance is uh, sufficiently larger. Um, um, so uh, one one way to quantify this uh, per unit inductance and the capacitance is very simple. Um, in earlier discussion, I already told that Z naught basically is a function of per unit inductance and the per unit capacitance. Uh, provided that the losses is negligible, there is no loss, low loss transmission line. Now, velocity of the propagation of the wave inside the dielectric or the printed circuit board can be defined in terms of, uh, so C is the speed of wave, basically, small c. And it could be defined by the effective dielectric constant of the substrate over L, which is the per unit inductance and per unit capacitance, a big C. So this is a small c, this is basically the wave velocity. Now this effective um, dielectric constant could be basically simplified with the relative dielectric constant uh, in this way. And basically, it's a function of the substrate height and width as well, a microstipline width as well. So this one is 12 times the height of the substrate. So the H is basically this height, the thickness of the substrate, divided by W. W is basically nothing but the width of this microstipline. All right, so from here, you can basically calculate. So we know this, we know this, this is a constant. Um, we can find out L in terms of C. So the per unit inductance could be quantified, um, basically epsilon E divided by C square, which is the speed of light, times the per unit capacitance. And then per unit capacitance could be further simplified um, in this way. So this is a smaller c, speed of light, and this is the characteristic impedance. All right. So this is our per unit capacitance in terms of characteristic impedance and the substrate parameter, the electric constant, effective. And this is our per unit inductance in terms of substrate parameter. Uh, which is basically the dielectric constant, and in terms of um, the capacitance. So this way we can quantify the um, the self-inductance per unit inductance and self per unit capacitance, and uh, we can quantify the mutual inductance and the capacitance um, by using uh, another technique that I'm going to show later in a paper uh, at the end of this tutorial. All right, so we have to create a couple transmission line in HFSS and then simulate it. Um, this one is the ANSYS Electronics Desktop Interface. And if you click New, it will launch the project window. And from here, you can directly click on HFSS to launch the interface. Now our first step is to create the substrate, that's your PCB. And you can create it by using this Dropbox tool. So I just created a random substrate that we can definitely parameterize later. But first of all, you can see this substrate is defined as vacuum material. We have to change it first. Let me first assign Rogers Eight eight zero five eight eight zero. This one is very popular substrate, having a dielectric constant of two point two, and a very very low loss tangent. 
and that makes it a better choice over conventional for for service. It's a bit expensive, but it's worth it. And you can rename this box phone as substrate just for the record. And now let's parameterize this um, substrate. I mean, let's define the length, width, and the thickness of the substrate. Um, as you can see, this position uh, is the coordinates. And uh, basically, you, you will understand because this entire substrate is modeled within this XYZ coordinate system. And you can define up to um, which extent this box would extend towards X, Y, and the Z axis. So this one would be um, the half of the length of this substrate. That's SL by 2. Let me define as 30 millimeter, this length of the substrate. And then this one would be the width of the substrate along the y-axis, so I will take it as SW by 2. And let me define as the width as 20 millimeter. We can change it later, no problem at all. And Excel would be SL, and then Y size is SW. And the Z size is the, basically the thickness is along the z-axis, so I'm going to give it as um, sh substrate height as 0.5 millimeter. You can click on fit all to bring it within this um, window. Now let's um, create this ground plane beneath this substrate. And to do that, you can use this draw rectangle tool. We can draw it randomly, we can um, parameterize it later. So this rectangle one on a side is your ground. Let me change the color first. And we can also rename it just for convenience. And now let me define the coordinates. It's exactly same as before, SL by two. And then as the blue by two, and that should be negative SH. X size is SL, Y size is SW, and there you go, that's your ground. Um, now we have to change this. Um, boundary condition to perfect electric conductor or PEC because it's a metal sheet. All right. Um, now um, we have to create these two coupled transmission lines on top of this substrate. Um, let's uh, define a new coordinate system here and go to this relative CS1. Let me parameterize it. So um, I'm considering the space or the distance between this coupled transmission line as D, capital D. All right. So D is the separation between these two coupled transmission line. And let me consider is at 15 millimeter first. All right. Um, sorry, I cannot. Fifteen is larger. We have to keep it like maybe eight, or maybe five. All right. So um, if D is a separation between the two transmission line, then that should be basically half of the D. this newly defined coordinate system compared to this previous coordinate system. So let me define the microstrip line first. This is your microstrip line. I'll change it to yellow. And then let me define it as M1. So 
So x size is basically um, the length of this substrate. So it would be minus a cell by 2. Cell y size is negative mw the microstrip width. Let me define it as 1.54 millimeter. Okay. You can change the boundary to PC or perfect electric conductor. All right. Um, now you have to define a port. One port here, another port on the other side of this microstrip transmission line. So let's define a new coordinate system here relative CS2, which is basically an offset from the previous one by the half of the weight of the source ring. Should be a cell by two. All right, so um, that should be basically positive a cell by two. Yeah. Now, Currently, the grid is oriented along xy plane, so I need to change it to yz plane. Then you can draw a little rectangle that is basically your um your lump port. So this one is exactly the same as the width of this microstrip transmission line. In the blue, length of this rectangle should be equal to the thickness of the substrate. So that's minus sh. Let me change the color for better visualization. All right, now you can simply copy it on and, and then duplicate it on the other side. That's it. You have now another port on the other side. All right, so rectangle one is your port one, so you can name it as P1. And rectangle two is your port two. You can rename it as P2. Right now they are unassigned. So we'll assign the port later. Now the first transmission line is complete. We can simply copy paste the entire transmission line along with the ports to um, um, duplicate it to the other side. All right. Um, let's select mirror, select this one on the origin, click on it, and then you can drag it to the other side. All right now, yeah, you are, um, you are having these two couple transmission lines. Um, they are basically now unassigned, so we have to assign them with a proper boundary condition. This one is the M2. So I will name it M2 and P2 and P1. So P, P1 underscore 1 is basically port 3. And this one is port 4. Let me make it small. All right, okay, I think it's just on to that anyway. Now, um, M2 should be assigned with 
perfect electric conductor condition PC now you can assign the ports P1 this is your port 1 right click on it go to assign excitation and select long port um, we are going to use ground as the reference conductor this one so click OK this would be your port 2 in the same manner this would be your port 3 and this would be your oops all right is your Now let's create the radiation boundary around this entire substrate. Okay, that's enough. And you have to um, make sure that your solution type is in driven terminal mode. All right, now select this entire radiation box and go to assign boundary and then select radiation. Um, we have this for ports, um, make sure you are renaming it to P1, P2, P3, and P4. All right, and then um, add a solution setup at first. We're going to simulate it at uh, 10 gigahertz, so that would be our frequency of operation, or interest. Change it to maybe 20, 1. And we will define a sweep as well, frequency sweep, because the impedance of this transmission line is a frequency dependent parameter. So we might be interested in looking at the impedance at different frequency points. So you can add a discrete sweep ranging from maybe 9 to 11 gigahertz. Um, or um, we, can, we can also define a broad frequency range, for example, maybe 5 to 15. And let me define as the frequency points as maybe 50. And enable this. Okay. So you need to save the project first. You can save the project as couple transmission lines CL CTL and before running the simulation you can validate your design and you can see this green check marks and this means that everything is okay and you can run the simulation now um, if you click this analyze all then it would start the simulation process. So I will pause the video and then return again once the simulation is done. 
Okay, so as you can see in the message manager window, the normal completion of the simulation on server local machine. That means now you can see the results. Uh, go to this results panel and right click on it. And then create terminal solution data report, rectangular plot. Here, um, this uh, terminal list parameter will give you the um, the mutual coupling between these two transmission lines in decibel. So, um, um, so um, P1, P2, P3, and P4 are the corresponding four ports. So, um, as you can recall, we are only interested in the mutual coupling. So that means um, the self parameters like one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four that uh, that are not our interest. So those parameters are basically the reflection coefficients uh, in the corresponding ports. So um, we are only interested in the cross um, coefficients. For example, if you want to find out the coefficient of mutual coupling between um, this port 1, or let's say this is the port 1, port 1 with the port 3 and port 4. All right. So you have to select now um, sp41 and s3p1 all right in decimal so you can plot it and you can see the near and far um and mutual coupling all right now in the same manner if you want to see let me go back to this window. If you want to see the mutual coupling between this port 2 with port 4 and 3, then simply select SP32 and S4P2. You can add trace so that you will see um, the trace in the same window. All right. So um, this way you can basically quantify the mutual coupling between uh, various um, ports of this coupled transmission line. I want to point out to an interesting paper written by David Hill et al. from 1990s. It's a classic paper. So this paper talks about uh, crosstalk between coupled transmission lines. As you can see, there are two microstrip lines on the same substrate separated by this distance S. Um, and these are the dielectric constant of the substrate and on the air. And then um, you can write down the telegraphers equations. So these are basically the mutual coupling um, parameters like um, mutual inductance, mutual capacitance, along with the per unit um, inductance and the capacitance of this line. So um, you can later on uh, prove that um, the characteristic impedance on each line would differ under the normal and I mean under the even and odd mode excitation. For example, if the currents on both conductor are on the same direction, that it provide you the um, even mode impedance Z Eve and if the currents are on opposite direction that means 180 degree out of phase then the impedance the characteristic impedance would be no longer Z naught the impedance of this each I mean transmission line would be uh, Z odd or defined by this um, per unit inductance and the capacitance terms Um, uh, these authors also showed that um, the crosstalk could be predicted from the S parameters between these two lines. So S31 and uh, S41 are the near and the far end um, crosstalk between these two lines. And they can be defined by this transmission line parameters, gamma naught, which is the propagation constant um, being defined as effective dielectric constant and the speed of light. 
So if you can play with this equation, you can easily find out the mutual coupling at a particular frequency and uh, beware that this S31, S41, um, these S parameters are frequency dependent parameters. So um, HFSS would provide you a direct um, frequency versus S parameter plot. And these close form equations would be able to give you at a particular frequency. They're very handy to compare your theoretical and uh, simulation results and give you some more insight into the design process. I hope you enjoyed this short video tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.